I wasn't going to go back and get a whole other degree and put another four years down, money down. So I invested in a boot camp and it was the best investment I made in my career. I studied math. Um, I did not study data analytics. I originally wanted to be a actuary. Unfortunately, it took me until my senior year of college to find out I don't want to do it. So come post-graduation, I started doing just temp jobs. I was doing office clerk things, front desk reception. Uh, but fortunately, I came across one temp job that had to do with data analytics. It was an operations backend work at a hedge fund. And that's where I fell in love with data. Eventually, I landed um, a role at a small to medium-sized business. Before Uber was a healthcare company, I developed my data analyst career there. It was really great to be at that size company because you get exposed to the operations as a whole for a company, so you understand how a, a company operates, all departments connect, and you get it at a very high level exposure, which is amazing. Um, once you jump into a large corporation such as Uber, if you're gonna be a data analyst, you're gonna go into a major tech company, uh, you're most likely to be in just one organization within that company. I can um, at least get an idea of how th departments connect, how people talk to each other, uh, how everything operates. Um, so just having that experience has been really great when I transition into a big tech company like Uber. I work in the engineering security organization and the role is data analyst. So I saw that on the job description and I got very excited and immediately my mind went to Mr. Robot. I thought that this is going to be me being Rami Malek, the, hoodie and being intense and dramatic about how you know we're going to prevent all these security vulnerabilities and stop the bad guys from breaking down the whole uber app but it's not like that in real life it's not that dramatic there's a bunch of automation tools that kind of stop vulnerabilities and stop bugs from happening it's still a, a lot of work and it's really uh exciting and intense work um but it's not that Hollywood <laughs> as it makes it seem uh, in the show. I support all teams within engineering security and that ranges from uh, product security to cloud security to security compliance, creating dashboards for them. They have different day-to-day -day processes, they have different data to deal with. Our job is to um, meet with them find out where the data is, and develop a pipeline to that data if it does not exist already, and then make a visualization to, um, dashboard for them based on whatever metrics they're trying to track. It could be operational metrics, uh, it could be high-level leadership metrics. All of the data that they need is getting pre presented in the right way. Um, that relationship building is a really big aspect. I mean, you can make, um, you know, something look really pretty, like a dashboard that looks exquisite, um, but then you give it to the team that's responsible for the data and they're like, it looks pretty, but the data there is just totally irrelevant. So it's super important to have that communication built with each team and ensure um, that what they need is being represented the right way. SQL, you gotta know how to use SQL queries. Some sort of visualization tool like Tableau or uh, Power BI or Looker, Python, R, those are usually really helpful for pipelines as well. Technical skills you can learn. Um, you can learn through courses, you can learn on the job. You have to have the non-technical skills to develop the relationships to ensure that the data you're actually doing with your technical skills is uh, is, is worth it. Like it's actually going to be seen. Communication skills, leadership skills, time management skills, um, project management skills. You take in all those requests, you have to make sure that you're doing them in a timely manner and you're getting things done um, efficiently. 
If you are transitioning, um, do a boot camp, do some sort of online uh, training courses. I did that because I transitioned from wanting to be an actuary to data analytics, and I wasn't going to go back and get a whole other degree and put another four years down, money down. So I invested in a boot camp, and it was the best investment I made in my career. What's great about it is as you learn it, you can kind of take what you learn and implement to your current job. This kind of like homework at school, but this homework actually helps you get a raise. Um, so you keep building on it, implementing your job, and then your job is be like, oh, that's really cool. Like, yeah, let's, you get more acknowledgement and maybe a promotion there. I got a promotion because of that. Nothing bad comes from it. Like the money I put down in that boot camp, I made back like in less than a couple of months because of the um, exposure and recognition I got at work. Especially if you're in a small company and they're not really leveraging data, your experience in a boot camp is going to get recognized for sure. You can implement that into your real job and you'll make such a huge difference, I think, at the company, just automating things and make data-driven decisions. And it's really rewarding to see that kind of uh, outcome. I think data analysts are needed everywhere. Um, honestly, I think if there was a big enough lemonade stand, you probably need a data analyst for that too. But um, yeah, there, every industry needs data analysts nowadays. It's all about human behavior data. It's like what you're searching for what you're ordering, what you're watching, where you're going, what you're paying for. Um, there's a huge abundance of data there. The amount of data is growing much quicker than the amount of data analysts, and data scientists that are out there. Um, so it's such a popular spot right now where people want to jump into these companies to get in there and clean the data. Uh, structure it, analyze it, and develop predictions, and just a better overall um, personalized experience. At Uber specifically, I don't have exposure to rider or driver data, and that's something I would be very interested in. I work in engineering security, so most of the data I deal with is um, relating to internal uh, employee data or security vulnerabilities, and bugs. Um, rider and driver have a huge data set, so it would be very interesting to see the kind of tools that the driver and rider team have developed. Um, so yeah, that, that would definitely be something I'll be interested in. Outside of Uber, I'm a big basketball fan, so I wanted to blend uh, sports and analytics and be like, that's so cool. It's a very popular area for people to want to get a job to. Uh, there's a lot of people who love it have a passion for sports and have a passion for analytics. Tech companies have a much larger data set than sports right now. So there's more data analysts needed at tech companies like Uber than working at like NBA. Fewer job opportunities with a high competition, uh, but it's something I would definitely be interested in. And like in the movie Moneyball, when they're using statistics to develop a championship team, and uh, that's something I would always be interested in, like in basketball, being able to see how a player shoots better in one side of the court versus the other side or something like that. And every player has their own specialty and kind of getting the best of all parts into making one really good team. It's not getting like the all-stars to make you a championship team. That's, I think, a common way, but this whole thing was um, about getting just good people across the board and using statistics to win. It would be very interesting to kind of just have like a data analyst per team or even per player to just help them develop you. Like you shoot better from this side of the three-point line, don't go on the other side. And it just helps with their shooting percentages. It correlates even to like a data team because as I've mentioned, non-technical skills are just as important as technical skills for data analysts. If they're good in both, then great. Kudos to you, that's amazing. That's very rare to find. But you want to get data analysts that also has the non-technical skills um, 
and those that have the really good technical skills and um, make that championship data team. <laughs>